dear students we have discussed the importance of transportation engineering what is transportation engineering why it is required to learn transportation engineering we have learned all these things in the previous session now it becomes necessary for a uh, necessary for us to learn the overview of transportation scenario in the india since we are in india we know that we have numerous modes of transportation modes being available and so that in this session what we are going to cover is we are going to cover the indian scenario of different modes of transport now we know that there are various modes of transport there is land transport there is there is water transport there is air transport also there is road transport railway transport what we are going to learn is we are going to learn the basic indian scenario in context of land transport water transport and air transport so let us start the session we are discussing about the transportation segment of india so we all know that a well neat and coordinated system plays an important role if it is about the development of a developing country like india without transportation there is no existence of development and if we are talking about india so the india is having various mode of transport as i have already discussed that railways are there road transports are there ports are there inland water transports are there the coastal shipping are there airports are there airlines are there so there are various mode of transport that are that are being available in india nowadays now out of all the modes means water transport air transport and land transport land transport plays a major role because we all know that whenever we want to move from one place to another majorly what we will choose is land transport and in land transport railways and road networks plays an important role so railways and roads are the dominant means of the transport because they carry more than 95% of the total traffic which is generated in the country means if 100% is tra traffic is generated then out of 100% 95% is is covered by railway and road transport so as i already mentioned that rail transport and road transport plays an important role let us discuss about road transportation in india india has the largest road network it is having second largest road network in the world we are having more than 33 lakhs km of road stretch various kind of road stretch are there such as national highway state highway major district road other district road village road express ways are there rural roads are there, there city roads are there then collector roads are there city roads are oh, sorry what i can say our artery system roads are there so there are numerous kind of roads but out of all the categories you will learn the nagpur road plan in the next sessions that national highways state highway major district road other district road and village roads play an important role rural roads also play an important role because if they are developed adequately they are maintained adequately appropriately then they are having very high potential to provide rural connectivity which is very vital to develop and generate what i can say economic growth if it is about india so let us discuss about certain factual details that national highway is having a length of approximately 66500 km currently it may be higher than that it comprises only 2% of the road network see 67000 of road network is of national highways and it carries only 2% of the total road network but this 2% of the road network carries 40% of the road waste traffic see this is how interesting it is if we talk about state highways then state highways are having the length of approximately 137000 major district roads are having the length of approximately 3 lakh kilometers and this state highways and major district roads also constitute the secondary system of the road transport they contribute significantly for the development of a country like india and they also contribute 40% of the traffic see 40% is carried by national highway state highway in india also carry 40% and the con contribution is 13% in the land and the remaining means remaining 20% is carried by other kind of roads such as rural roads village roads etc if we focus towards the proper development of rural roads then the rural road development can 
give us the enormous benefits. These are certain factual details as per the data of 31st March 2008 data provided by National Highway Authority of India NHGI. These are the factual details that there are 200 kilometers of expressways over there, 67,000 of National Highway, 1,30,000 of State Highway approximately. 4,65,000 of major district road, 26,50,000 of rural roads, then single lane roads are there which are having 32% of contribution, double lanes are having 56% of contribution, and four more or more lanes, the roads which are having four or more lanes contribute about 12% of the total road. So these are the old details, but these are what I can say reliable details because the source is energy. So we can have this as our reference. Now, if we discuss about the share of these transportation modes, then you will be amazed to learn the fact that the share of road transport in the passenger movement has also witnessed the quantum jump of 15 percentage was there in 1950 to 1951 and it has increased to 87 percentage by the end of 10th plan, by the end of 2010 approximately. So this is the jump of more than 60 percent is this is like anything so you can assume that what kind of growth is transportation sector is having these are the national highway network then let us learn about the indian railways if we discuss about indian railways then the indian railways in india has a historical legacy it is the vital part of the development of our country the first railway was started in 1853. It was only 1851 when the first train ran in the country for hauling construction material in Turkey. But officially, on 16th April 1853, the first passenger train, train was came into existence from Bori Bandar to Mumbai to Thane. So we all have learned that the first train was that was activated in 1853 in Thane. But this is the original stretch, Bori Mandar to Bombay to Thane. The actual date was 16th April 1853. 14 railway carriages carried about 400 guests at that time. 400 guests. Imagine the first passenger railway was carrying 400 guests at that time also. So what was the strength of our, what kind of strength we were having at that time? 400 guests from Mumbai to Thane and the distance was 21 miles. So approximately it is about 33 to 35 kilometers. And this was the formal birth of the rail network in India. And since then there is no looking back. It is interesting to know that Though a number of railways have been introduced, but its role in the economy of India is electrifying. These are the rural net, uh, rail network in India, railway zones. Let us discuss about water transportation. So India has a very long coastline. About 90% of the seaborne trade is handled by major ports such as Kendra, Mumbai, Navasheva, Marmoa, Kochi, Tutikori, Chennai, Vishakapatna. Paradip, Goa, Kolkata, Haldia, etc. We all know that we are having more than 7,500 kilometers of coastline and it is having an extensive network of inland waterways and sea waters. And this inland waterways means the network waterways which are situated inland means in country area. So it includes rivers, canals, backwaters, creeks. The total navigational length of the Indian waterway is about 14,500 14, kilometers. IWI, that means Indian Waterway Authority of India, is the statutory body which is in charge of the waterways in India. There are total 12 major ports, about 180 minor ports in India. This is old data, now, nowadays the numbers have been increased also. These are the important inland waterways in India. See this blue color. This, this, this. These are the important Indian waterways in India. This is the map of 2001 and 2002, but officially it has been collected from the government of India, so this is one of the most reliable sources. Now, if we discuss about air transportation, then we all know that air transport is one of the most modern and the quickest mode of transport. 
See, in earlier days, before few years ago, it was very difficult for middle class people to travel in air because the fare was quite high. But there has been a recent relaxation in the tax air fuel and various kind of policies have been introduced due to which a middle class family can also travel in air. And if we have a look on the domestic scene, then majority of the airports have been staked under the private sector. Even airport authority of India has also been has also sold major of its parts to the private airlines. The development of airport is no longer under the public sector. It is nowadays public private partnership. Public private partnership means PPP model that is called. Public means government money. Private means private company money and partnership. So, if 100 rupees is required in order to establish an airport, then 51 rupees will be shared by government and 49 rupees will be shared by private company. So, this is how we can understand this partnership that is called as public private partnership. It is one of the most latest as well as trending mode of what I can say financing system. And you will learn that in the uh, next semester subjects also. International Green Fair Airport has also been developed in Kochi in Kerala and many NRI people, loans from the financial institutions have helped India to contribute to the improvement of air transport. If we discuss about the air network in India, then these are the data of the year 2000 where air network can be observed over here. 